Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Women in Leadership Talk podcast. Kim Carpenter, thanks for joining us today. Super excited for the conversation we're going to get into, talking about leadership and agility, and just grateful that you're here joining us today. Thank you so much, Vicki. It's a total honor, and I am so happy to be connecting with a fellow Canadian and American and also <laughs> with all the listeners here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're thrilled to have you and we're thrilled to have our audience here. Uh, we know you have a choice as to what podcast you listen to. So we're super grateful that you're here with us today and share this episode. We've got lots of good juice to talk about and uh, just, you know, don't hesitate. Give us a review, send that out to your friends and, and just share you know, more about what it's like to be a leader and also a conscious leader. So let me give you a little feedback about Kim before we jump in. So you know why Kim and I are even talking about this today. So Kim is a prof professionally certified coach. She's a high performance executive coach, corporate trainer and speaker, partnering with leaders and their, their teams to achieve breakthrough results. She is the founder of People at the Center, which is a talent development consultancy dedicated to the cultivation of people-centric leadership. Yahoo! <laughs> Love that, Kim. And she she uses research-backed tools and proven practices um, so that they can help organizations shape leaders who don't just inspire their teams to go the extra mile, but also bring everyone together to tackle some of those big head-on challenges. And goodness knows we have a lot of complexity and acceleration in our world today. So perfect, perfect timing. Um, Kim has also done a lot of work with organizations like Apple, Netflix, Microsoft, and PBS. And so we're honored to have Kim here today and sharing her insight and some of her, you know, best and most favorite takeaways as to how we can be even better leaders in this world. So Kim, let's, let's first start with, you know, what led you to developing the company that you've led and, and why is this such a passion for you? Hmm, thank you for asking. Yeah, I, my first career was uh, in New York City. I worked in advertising and then IT professional services firms at the beginning of the dot-com boom. Mm -hmm. It was a really exciting time. And, you know, in my late 20s, I was working very hard, <laughs> very mm -hmm. long hours. Um, and, and in a bunch of different cultures and companies, I bounced around a little bit in the beginning there because I knew, you know, a fraction about uh, tech development and website development, and they really couldn't hire us fast enough. And so I kept getting better <laughs> offers at the next place and the next place. And so I actually got to experience a lot of different company cultures. And um, I also went through some personal challenges. I went through a divorce in my 20s and hired my first executive coach at the time and fell in love with coaching, mm -hmm. fell in love with the coaching process, um, started training myself around it, and then later got trained at um, Coach U, which was one of the very first coach training institutes, and started using those principles with my direct reports and just loved it, loved putting mm -hmm. people at the center and seeing people flourish. And so after um, about a 12 year career inside of corporate, I decided I'm ready to make the jump and start my own business and that I really want to make a bigger contribution to people, having people feel unleashed in their lives and that anything's really possible and that, you know, I'm showing up at work and I can be fulfilled here and I can <laughs> create a difference here. Uh, so that's what really catapulted me to start my own coaching practice. I love it. I love it. And so many things there, you know, number one, you, when you started out with coaching, it was more about how to utilize that with your teams, right? And and highly recommend that because you learn so much about yourself through that process. Um, and I can only imagine the different cultural experiences that you went through as you navigated all these different um, tech firms and and you and I both know coming out of the corporate world, um, you know the culture makes or breaks an organization, and yeah. you know whether that engagement is there or not. And 
so when you think about the work you're doing today and how fast everything's accelerating, how how do people, humanity, even keep up with everything that's going on from every aspect of an organization? Well, it's such a great question. And Vicki, I honestly think we can't. We can't actually keep up. There's always going to be more to do. I think it's always going to be moving faster and faster. And so we need to learn how to be okay with, I'm never going to get it all done, Mm. right? Or I'm never going to always be ahead of the curve. There's going to be a dance. There's going to be a, okay, I'm doing what I'm doing now. And I can see there's still 10 steps ahead or 20 or a hundred steps ahead (laughs) that I've got to get to. And if we can drop in to the moment that we're in now and look at pausing and connecting with each other, connection is one of my big pillars of my work. I know you're totally aligned with that too. Mm -hmm, 100%. (laughs) Drop in and connect, connect to ourselves. Like what's going on for me? Connect to each other. What's going on with my colleagues, my teammates and my leadership? What's going on in the culture? And and what what needs to be done today <laughs> rather than just always accelerating forward and kind of frankly bypassing some yeah. of the important conversations that need to be had or you know, those moments where we need to stop and go, wait a minute, guys. <laughs> what is going on, who, well, let's realign, let's get committed to what we're doing, our vision, the mission here, you know, putting people at the center, then you can actually accelerate. Yeah, I and so true what you just said. And, and you made me think about a client I was working with um, more recently in the last year or so that you know, we we were working on trust and how to build trust within the organization. And simply, simplicity and being present had such an impact. And I remember the CEO saying to me afterwards, he said, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize my people were going through all of these things outside of what was actually happening within the organization. And so it, when you take that pause to your point, it helps people realign and, and I think see each other as human beings and that you know, every day is not just about being on that autopilot and and to your point, running to do the next thing. So just slow it down and, and be present with what's happening. Yeah. I don't know who came up with that phrase, but I hear it a lot. The slow down to speed up. Yeah. And sometimes we need to do that. And that's really hard for senior leaders, especially who are accountable to the board, to shareholders, et cetera, to yeah. think about doing that. But sometimes that is the best course of action if you want to accelerate. A hundred percent, 100 percent. And so, Kim, what are what are some ways you think organizations can, other than what we've talked about, really embrace those changes that needs to happen? I mean, the complexities are not going away. The speed is not going away, to your point. So what are some other things? If I'm if I'm the, uh, you know, average person, you know, trying to figure out how to take care of my parents, raise my kids, do my job, <laughs> like, how do we how do we connect with that and be OK that it is enough? Mm. Oh, that's such a big question, Vicki. There's a lot in there. I think for me, what I work on with a lot of my clients is just creating those intentional spaces Mm -hmm. for the check-ins, for the deeper conversations, for the, you know, are we okay conversations. I think it's really important. And again, it seems like everybody's schedules are over full. I have a I have a client who called me and she said, Kim, I'm not only double booked every hour, but I'm triple booked sometimes, right? And so inside of our company cultures, we need to take a a step back and look at, are we actually setting ourselves up for success when we're doing things like that? And having somebody have the courage to raise their hand and question some of these practices and saying, this isn't actually workable. I love that word workable, right? Like this isn't workable and we need to find a new way forward. So I think what came to me when you asked that question is creating those intentional spaces 
-hmm. preparing people with the communication skills to be able to have those hard conversations to push back mm -hmm. and then having senior leadership understand <laughs> that they need to be receptive to listening. So some of the companies that I work with are implementing listening sessions where people can bring ideas. Sometimes there's not enough psychological safety in the company and they need to do that anonymously mm -hmm. and address things, right? There's always a way forward. So I sometimes like to think about it like poking holes in it, you know, it's like, where could, where is there an in? Where is there an opening for something new, for a new idea and for others, voices that are maybe usually a little bit quieter mm -hmm. to be heard? Yeah, that's a very important aspect, I think, because you will have people that have brilliant ideas who they do hold back, right? Because they're fearful of, am I going to be judged? Is is it going to come back to haunt me? Um, all of these stories often that we tell ourselves where nine times out of 10, you're not the only person at the table thinking <laughs> what's just not being said, right? And and so it does take courage to your point to, to bring up some of those things. And even when you were talking about scheduling, um, I, I find that a fascinating um, way that we have moved forward where you don't own your own calendar anymore. And I actually had a CEO the other day, he said to me, he goes, Vicki, he goes, I feel like I'm just running all the time. He goes, I don't even, I don't even own my own schedule. And I, I said to him, well, how, how would you like your schedule to be working? Right. Like, cause yeah. you have to take some ownership of that too. And I remember even in my own last corporate role, I removed myself from everybody being able and, and it wasn't received well, <laughs> but I had to remove myself because like your client, you're getting double, triple booked. And how can you, how can you actually execute? How can you be strategic and start to make those changes that you were talking about earlier? If you have no space to even be able to think. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's so necessary if we're going to come up with the new world of work, <laughs> innovations and out of the box thinking, you've got to have that space. You do, you do. And, and so that leads me into, you know, how do you have these courageous conversations? How do we become, from your lens, how do we become much more conscious as leaders? And leadership can mean lots of things to, to different people. In this particular scenario, let's say, um, you know, leaders of our lives and leaders within organizations. So what are your thoughts on that, Kim? I think self-reflection and self-awareness is the place we all have to start. And I'm always shocked when I meet people that haven't had the types of experiences that I know you and I have gotten to have, Vicki, through our coach training and then coaching others. Um, I don't know about you, but my own stuff, whatever I've got to deal with always inevitably comes up inside of those coaching scenarios. So I'm always reflecting and looking at what, where's my growth edge and what's the next thing that I need to do or who I need to be in order to move my growth forward and expand myself. And so I think having those conversations is critical and you can have them inside of organizations without a coach like us present, but it's so much more effective yeah. when you do have facilitators, guides, coaches who are guiding them. Yeah. Let's start looking at ourselves first. And then inside of communication, I work with just communication styles and um, ways to reflect on how, how do I communicate? Because oftentimes we can't even see ourselves. We're so close to it. And then getting reflection from others. Okay, this is how I'm experiencing your communication. And then looking outward at others, understanding other people's natural styles and how do I adapt, not to be inauthentic or manipulative, mm -hmm. but how do I adapt to have more connection and better outcomes and deeper understanding inside of teams, inside of the whole culture. So I think start with yourself then looking at how are we doing as a team? Yeah. How are we communicating together? How are we achieving these things? And then looking on a cultural level. So we always, you know, hear people at the center, we look at those three 
concentric circles moving outward to identify where are the gaps, where are the holes, where are the disconnects that we need to reconnect in order to be more efficient. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love what you shared there. And it, it's, it is complex <laughs> because if without that self-reflection and that self-awareness, sometimes we're not even aware of how things trigger us. Right. And, and then being able to share, you know, Hey, this is Kim, this is how you, when you said that, what were, what were you trying to get across to me? Cause here's how it impacted me. Right. Like mm -hmm. that's a, that's a very important conversation to have because the, the listener is formulating based on their reality. Right. And I had that not too long ago with a client where, you know, one person said something to another person and it completely triggered and set the, set the individual off. And of course, through the coaching, you know, we were able to unpack why, why did that, did that upset you so much? But to your point, what I love is having that coach or having that objective party help you to reframe that. And, and so that you become conscious of what your belief systems are and how you're actually communicating. Cause we're too, we are too close oftentimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I love what, I love what you shared there. So let's talk a little bit about difficult conversations that that's always a hot topic yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. I think how skilled you are, it still can be difficult for us. So why do you think so many people avoid or they try to stay away from having those really difficult discussions? Well, who wants to do that, Mickey? <laughs> who? <laughs> true. <laughs> it's so true. I mean, I've been working on this for 20 years and I can look and see, man, when I have to have those hard conversations, it's not, I'm not running to do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's going a lot faster now <laughs> because I have developed the skill set to do it. So um, I love, I know you do too, but I love to bring the neuroscience conversation mm -hmm. into this. Like what keeps us from having the conversations is part of it's just our biology. Our brains are built in a way to have us always scanning for threats. You know, the part of our brain, the amygdala is always scanning for threats. And when it senses a threat, it actually debilitates us a little bit in a way. So um, interesting fact, we can actually be 10 to 12 IQ points lower when our amygdala is hijacking our brain. So all of you listening have had that experience of being super prepared for a meeting and you're speaking and then someone interrupts or someone makes a face at you <laughs> and suddenly you lose your train of thought. It's like, you're not there in the room anymore. Well, it's true. Your normal capacity for logical reasoning, rational thinking is inhibited by your amygdala. So I think we're just built to avoid those conversations and, and we can transcend our biology, right? We have the capacity to build new skills and abilities to do that. But I think these are hard to have. And if you look, especially in the context of business, there can be some really severe repercussions mm -hmm. for having hard conversations. People aren't always receptive. <laughs> People don't always want to go there or listen to it. Um, so I've had clients who called things out in a very eloquent way with executive presence and did all of the right things and still were sidelined, you know, pushed out of projects or meetings, not promoted. Um, I mean, there, there are real impacts. So it's always a risk assessment. Sure. Am I willing to take the risk to have the conversation? Is the upside or downside bigger? And I think we just have to evaluate that in the moment every time. Yeah. But the leaders that I know are excelling are having them and whatever happens, they then address that, right? If something negative happens, sometimes you have to leave that culture and go somewhere else or change departments or, you know, there's always a way forward. So I want to leave people with that too. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love what you just shared there because I, I think there is the other component of if you don't have the conversation, what does that do for you internally? So, so that goes back to what you were saying earlier about that self-reflection, self-awareness, and I would say self-ownership, right? So 
if you're, if you're not having those conversations, what is it doing to you internally? And, and sometimes maybe it's not the right culture to your point. And, and these are clues to, to help you understand, you know, what's the environment that you're going to be your best self with and at your highest and best potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great point. Yeah, I know it's, it's not an easy one. And to your point, like, when you were talking about, you know, 20 years, you've been practicing, you know, how to, how to be better at it or, or how to regulate. Right. And, and that amygdala, we go into hypervigilance, right? Because it is that fear that kicks in and, and that's okay. As long as we don't stay there for a super long time. Um, and, and I would be with you as well. Like I had a situation two weeks ago and I kept replaying it over and over in my head. And I was like, how did that get twisted so much? Right. And I'm thinking every word and I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, this makes no sense to me. And it was very upsetting. Right. Because I thought, I know this person quite well, how could they have misunderstood? Right. So it took courage and confidence to call up the person and say, Hey, can we talk about this? Like, I think there was some misunderstandings that took place. And what I will say, when you have that courage, it can work out well, oftentimes, right? There's the, sometimes people aren't receptive, but this, in this case, the person was very receptive and said, oh my gosh, like, no, it just got translated incorrectly. So you can sit and worry about it (laughs) and let the amygdala take over. But until you address it, like you could be creating your own movie in your head. Absolutely. Yes. And that's normally what we do, I think, is create our own movie in our head. And so uh, I know you and I are both familiar with the work of Judith Glazer. She calls them yeah. mind movies. Yes. And I think that's such an appropriate uh, title for that because it is like a whole movie. Sometimes you can have a whole, you know, two hour cinematic Hollywood film <laughs> <laughs> go with character development and everything in your mind movie. And so coming back to reality, coming back to what's actually happening here. Oh, mm-hmm. I said these words specifically, and the person must have misinterpreted. Let me go check that out. Let me go clean that up. Let me take responsibility for my communication. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I love that. And I think that plays into the conscious leadership, right? Because you're taking ownership of the intent might have been completely different, but it was misunderstood. And and we have a responsibility to clean up some of those um, misconceptions and, and making sure that we're checking in. Yeah. So Kim, like you're doing great work and you're, you know, helping organizations really become more people centric, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, What are what are some of the best practices that you're seeing your clients implement that might help our audience, um, you know, to take back and share with their organization? Yeah. Thanks for asking that. I think best practices really are um, that we're helping people implement are around effective communication mm-hmm. and having those, just having the challenging conversations is a huge first step, right? Uh-huh. Just look at what are the conversations that actually need to be had? What are you stepping over and stepping over and stepping over and it's not getting resolved? Mm-hmm. So I think A, just have the conversation and B, try to have it well. <laughs> try to have that those conversations in a more effective way by understanding yourself, others. Um, as you were saying, let me check it out. You know, I'm making up this story. I have this mind movie going on. But what's happening for you on the other side of that communication? How are you receiving my communication. So taking responsibility for that communication and then finding ways to give really clear, kind and candid feedback or information to someone and having a two-way dialogue about it, right? That transformational versus just transactional Mm -hmm. conversations. Like, here's what I'm seeing. What are you seeing? But I think oftentimes we want to just give one way communication and of we course. Want, right. And we want to think, well, I'm, I told you, and yeah. you know, <laughs> <Wow. get it." laughs> right. 
why can you, I, this is what I said. And why didn't you get it? And why didn't you do exactly what I wanted you to yeah. do? And as we know, human beings are beautiful and complex. And so I think we need to, the best practice in general, is just really diving into how are we communicating or not communicating? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, as you were saying that you took me back in my own memory bank and I remember oh gosh, this was years ago. I would have been in my late twenties and I took over my first district and I had 18 stores. So I'd gone from being a solo, you know, unit to 18, had moved halfway across the country in the U S and I remember like going into these locations and I would repeat myself the same every single time, two weeks, I'd go back, I'd have the same conversations this went on for a couple of months. And then finally one day I woke up and I was like, okay, what is going on? And I was blaming my people. I was like, what is wrong with them? Do, don't they get it? Right. And then to your point earlier, I had to take a step back and say, what role am I playing in this? Mm -hmm. And that's when I started shifting my communication and really looking at like, when you tell people what to do, you're not helping them learn to critically think and to problem solve. And you're also taking responsibility off of them. And now the responsibility is on me because they could say, oh, well, Vicki told me to do this, right? So I don't have to think anymore. Right. And it was a big eye opener for me. And very quickly, I had to shift to your point that communication style and get them to start telling me, what do you see? What's happening in your store? Why are we getting X results, whether that was positive, negative, or, you know, however you want to classify it. But that communication to your point is so critical, Kim, and you need guidance. You need help from somebody like yourself, somebody like me that goes in and helps people even understand why are you getting or not getting the results that you want from your people? And I, I, I see this a lot with leaders where they always say, I don't have time. I don't have time to have these transformational conversations. I just need to tell them what to do so we can move on. And it's like, yes, but then you're always going to be telling them what to do because <laughs> yeah. they think. That's right. That's right. And then we create cultures and work environments that, that aren't sustainable yes. because there's no way that one person can have all the answers at the top. Right. And we, you know, we know you can accelerate the growth and success of teams and companies when everybody, the collective wisdom of the group is adding to that success. Yeah. So thanks for sharing that story, Vicki. I know those moments are humbling and I've had many of them myself as a leader, like, wow, that was not the way to do something. <laughs> you know? That didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try yeah. something different. <laughs> try a new approach. Yeah. Well, and I, I think that's such an important, you know, reflection to have that, you know, if what we're doing is not working and we keep doing it, <laughs> expecting something different, like what's that definition, right? Right. Yeah. I think that's the definition of insanity. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. And so, so it is important that we start to look at how do we shift our style? How do we you know, and when you're impacting a whole organization, you know, I'll go back to, you know, what you're doing, people at the center, like that is such a, such an important value and mission for every organization, because when people feel that they're at the center, they are more engaged, they want to be part of the solution. And so um, we just need to have more of you doing that. <laughs> I know, right? I think it's so beautiful that coaches like us can get together and have these conversations because it's going to take all of us. 100%. Every <laughs> single one of us on the planet who wants to create positive change um, to actually make a difference, to start to move the needle for people and organizations. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So Kim, what would you, what would be like, one tip you would want to share with our audience that they could take into their organization um, just as a starting point to, you know, start to shift that thinking from silos and ind independent or individual to collective and, and transformational. Mm. 
one, just one, Vicki? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, because then that way, if we do another podcast, <laughs> you can share another one. <laughs> we can be here all day. I know. Um, the place I always like to start is looking at where are the disconnect. Mm -hmm. So we want to be connected. We want to be connected with ourselves. We want to be connected with the people that we work with as human beings. We want to feel connected to the culture, the work, and the organization. So I would start looking at where are you personally disconnected? Are you disconnected on the level of your values with the work that you're doing? Are you disconnected because you're not having connected communication and conversations? What is that for you? Then look at your team. Where's the team disconnected? Are they not having effective communication? Are they not connected to the work? Are people quiet quitting or checking out? Mm -hmm. So I think first, just looking at what is so, what's the state of the union here? Yeah. And then pick a place to start. And I would always start with you. When you get aligned and connected to yourself and the work that you're doing and your leadership, you're going to be able to influence and inspire others at a greater level. So that would be, I know it's not easy, but I think it's a place to start and just start, yeah. just do something, you know, get an accountability buddy and say, this is the disconnection that I'm going to go after in the next couple months and you know maybe somebody that can be your thought partner in how you're going to tackle that yeah or yeah or yeah absolutely like joining together always makes it easier <laughs> and yeah. you don't feel like you're on an island by yourself right and and what you just said there Kim when you're looking at where are those gaps or disconnects when you talked about quiet quitting that also shows up with sick days and, mm -hmm. um, you know, having to take sabbaticals or having, uh, you know, medical leaves and medical leaves come with mental health, physical health, like many different ways. And so if that's rampant in your organization, then there's definitely some communication issues that are going on. And so, yeah, yeah. love that you brought that up. Yeah. Thank awesome. You. And where can people find you? How can they find Kim Carpenter? <laughs> yeah. People at the center. You can find me on LinkedIn. It's linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Kim Carpenter, all one word, or people at the center.com is our website. Would love to connect with you and see how I can support you. Awesome. Awesome. So if you have questions after you've listened to our conversation today, because I think we we highlighted a number of things, you know, feel free to reach out to Kim. You can reach out to me. I'll relay the the questions you have to her. Um, and if you're interested in your own leadership, like where you think you are, go on to Will Empowered. That's one L and that willempowered.com. Take our free leadership quiz. It'll give you some insight as to that self-reflection and how you're showing up as a leader. So it's a, it's a great starting point as well. So lots of good resources, I think, from both of us. Um, where you can, you know, start to tap into how do you, how do you show up better as a leader or how do you show up as the leader you want to be? So I want to thank our audience for being here. Kim, thank you for being here. We're super grateful to hear your expertise and the great work that you're doing. And uh, we'll have to do this again because we could Absolutely. be here all day. <laughs> we could. And Vicki, I just want to take a moment and really thank you for all the work that you're doing for women empowerment and for leadership in the world. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful to you. So we look forward to having everyone join us on our next Will Talk podcast. And we hope you find this episode enlightening and please do share it and leave us a review. Let us know what you think. We do, you know, do our best to bring great content, great conversations to share with the world. So thanks everybody for being here and have a fabulous day.